Hello, my name is Dave Yelene and I'm the director of the Muskegon County Department of Veterans Affairs and welcome to another segment of Veterans Did You Know. Today we're staying in the home office here at the Vet Center and uh, we're going to talk about our homeless program that we've instituted and we run here. And my guest today is Norma Yelene and Norma is the administrative assistant here and has been associated with the Vet Center since its basic its inception in 1990. And, she was wrangled into working for about a year and a half for free, and then uh, we finally got a few pennies and hired her on, and uh, uh, she's been an administrative assistant ever since, and uh, Norma runs the Transition House program for us. That's what our program is called, our Homeless Program. Uh, we have a grant uh, with the Salvation Army, and uh, the state of Michigan, through the Department of Human Services, is yes. how it went. Mm -hmm. Uh, hired the Salvation Army and uh, they have eight other agencies that they sponsor as far as uh, emergency shelters or transitional houses. We kind of stayed away from the emergency shelter because that was more or less like the City Rescue Michigan, uh, you know, one night overstay uh, and then you're, you're back on the street and then to the next night type stuff. And ours we call it more of a transition house because we wanted to have the families have a, a place to stay for a designated period of time where they could help get their lives back together. In our program, uh, we get to how, how many, 90? It's 90 bed nights. 90 bed nights is when a family comes to us. And we kind of just deal with families. Uh, early on, uh, when we first started the program, about 1994, I think we were talking back before three or four mm -hmm. is when we started it, uh, we did try it with single vets for a while, and we found that most of our single vets were the males who had long-term uh, uh, issues with substance abuse, uh, unemployment, alcohol. Uh, alcohol. Uh, and, uh, and, and we were getting more and more families coming to us. Uh, and, and we decided to, since the City Rescue Mission was here, uh, that could house the single uh, males, that we would just concentrate on the families. And that's what we've basically done. So to stay in our program, you have to be, uh, have to be a family or a single mom or a single dad with children and they have, to, they have to be there. Or a single couple, a couple, not a single couple, a couple without children. We, we, we've done it too, but our issue is basically based on the family. And that happened early on was uh, one of the very first families we got back in 1994 was a, uh, was a single dad who had gone to the rescue mission. He had lost his job, lost his home, and uh, he had three girls. And uh, he went to the city rescue mission. They said they couldn't house him because the, uh, the, the kids had to go, and a wife normally would go to the women's dormitory and the men's dormitory strictly for men. So uh, they said they thought the vets had something going on. Was he a veteran? He said, yes, he was. So he got issued to us. And uh, that was the first ones we, we put up. And uh, a very good success story because at that time, we were allowed to keep them longer than 90 days of families because truly uh, when a family becomes homeless, uh, you can't fix that in 90 days. That's pretty tough. Yeah. And, uh, they hardly get on their feet. Uh, uh, we were able to keep them um, as long as we needed to. And it took about six months to a year, wasn't it, before we could really get a family, uh, you know, a source of income coming in, get them stabilized, uh, clean up the mess they made from, you know, utility bills outstanding or uh, other things that happen to you when you, when you lose everything. Uh, and we had a really good success rate, but then the state came back down and said that 90 days was the maximum the max. that uh, they're going to be allowed to stay. Um, and it's it's a tough program, uh, you know. I, it, it normally really deals with the uh, uh, the families very desperate. Um, uh, uh, our, our target population is veterans, obviously, because that's where we are, veteran service center. But if we have an apartment that's open. Uh, then we will uh, normal we'll deal with the um, non-veterans. Yeah, non-veterans. Mainly from uh, every woman's place is where we deal. Mm -hmm. from. That are referred to the center uh, for the program, which is a 90 bed night program. Um, most of uh, these women come from very abusive situations uh, with uh, small young children, uh, which is a uh, devastating effect on the uh, kids. Uh, but yes, our, our priority are veterans and their families. Um, hopefully uh, in the 90 uh, days uh, throughout the program, uh, they are able to, in a lot of cases, find a job, uh, which is difficult in Muskegon because the jobs are few and far between. Uh, but at least they know for 90 days that they are gonna be taken care of where there's food-wise. Uh, if they're cold, we everything is heated. Uh, they don't have to worry about uh, being out in the cold, sleeping in their car. I always have access to food. That's one thing that we will not let anyone do without is food that's in our transition house. Uh, hopefully in the 90 days they can find a job. Uh, we have a job rep here for uh, veterans. Uh, so it's, it's, while they're standing here, it's very convenient. 
And then the thing we really tried to do was, um, uh, and again with the City Rest Commission, you have to be at a certain time in, I think by six o'clock, mm -hmm. maybe check out in the morning. Um, so uh, if you were able to find a second or third shift job, you, you wouldn't be able to go there because you couldn't get check yourself back in. So these apartments, we we, we try to uh, deal with them like they're um, responsible adults, but they, hopefully they should be. Uh, you know, just good things sometimes happen, uh, or bad things could happen sometimes good people. And you know, you lose your job, uh, 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 the landlord says that's it, you're out of here and you're on the street. And we have literally had, uh, people uh, pull up in a van or a truck or a car and come in and, and were referred to us by another agency and their families are right out sitting outside in the car and um, they just you know don't know where they're going to go or what they're going to do and then if we have an apartment open and we take them up and show them the apartments are totally turnkey we, we we've they're furnished totally furnished mm -hmm. uh, it's not the Taj Mahal but uh, and speaking of Taj Mahal I, I made that very same statement one time and uh, that little uh, one of the young girls uh, said, you know, we, we took them in an apartment, showed them their one bedroom apartments, basically. This was the, uh, uh, where we are was old jewel dorm in Baker College, that's where we're located. So we kept the third floor, uh, that's our homeless program with the six apartments up there. And so uh, we opened the door, walked in, said, well, it's not big, and it's not the Taj Mahal. And then the little girl looked at it, she said, it looks huge to us, you know, and I looked at Norm and said, well, that's, I guess it's the perspective, you know, we're, uh, we think it should be bigger or better, but when you're living in a car and you have no place to go, you don't have anything of your own, uh, and somebody offers you a nice warm apartment, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's pretty grand and it, it means a lot to them. But they have their own key to get in, uh, it's, it's security to get in the building, and they have, uh, have, have the pass key to get down the hallway and a key to their own apartment. So they come and go just like uh, they were renting an apartment. Uh, they can take a second shift job or third shift job. Um, we kind of run it like you were in the military. Uh, each family takes a, a, a week's turn at the helping keeping the, you know, the, the general areas clean and you're responsible for your own apartment. Uh, and we, uh, we treat you like adult, that's what we expect to happen. But you know, every now and then uh, uh, you run into a, uh, somebody that just, uh, you know, just doesn't want to go with the program stuff. And we've had to evict some people out of here, and yeah. we do, because uh, uh, our, our job is to, uh, to give you a helping hand, uh, not a handout, because in, if, if we're going to provide a place for you to stay, then we expect for you to do everything in your power. Uh, you have to make sure the kids are in school. Uh, and, the kid, and the schools will come over and pick the kids right up here, uh, right on, on, on site where we are. So the kids have to be enrolled in school and be going to school. Uh, and then sometimes the, uh, the families, uh, especially sometimes the single moms, uh, uh, like Norma said, they're coming out of an abusive situation. Uh, and um, it's, it's pretty tough to see them. And you, and you see these little kids and you're, it just breaks your heart sometimes. Uh, uh, they, just, uh, they just want some kind of stability, I guess. Yeah. And David mentioned uh, uh, the security here, and we are very secure here. It's a lockdown situation. Uh, in order to get into the front entrance, you have to have a key. Uh, to get up to the third floor to your apartment, it is locked down with a car key to get into the hallway, and then from there you have to have a lock and key to get into your apartment. So they feel very secure, uh, and a lot of times from where they're coming from, security is very, very important to them and to the kids also. I just wanted to bring that up with yeah. security yeah. here. And, and, and it's really oftentimes you come in the evening time or even in the daytime, you walk upstairs and we go check on something and uh, many of the apartment doors are open and the families are talking back and forth because there's children are involved and, uh, and they realize that they're not the only person in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five other families and they see a family, they network a lot. Uh, you know, where, where'd you get your job? Or how'd you find out about that? Or how'd you do this? And where'd you get this? And so uh, it's, it's kind of a communal thing up there. It's really kind of nice to see where they, they kind of, you know, they realize that they're not the only ones in this situation. Uh, and uh, they're safe and they're secure and it gives them some breathing room. And, and if they're veterans, of course, we, uh, we are able to help them apply for their benefits mm -hmm. uh, through soldier sailors or the trust fund and the food bank and, and tie those other services on. But uh, uh, if you've not been homeless before or been close to being homeless, it's a pretty scary situation. And, uh, and to this date, uh, since we started this, we are the only uh, organization in Muskegon County that keeps the family together mm -hmm. at no charge. Uh, 90 days is what we keep them uh, and uh, able to help them get on their feet. Let me take a, a quick break here, but we'll be back in just a few minutes, so stay tuned, please. 